Morning everybody. Here we are at Tuesday this week. Um, and just down here at the, the back of the lake. Yes, I know we're a little bit earlier over the last couple of days, but that's because Shah's on early starts, so just uh, yeah, you'll catch this when I guess you get out of bed for those that uh, get up a little later. But it's just a, a nice little uh, spot down here beside the lake, little place to just come down and come for a stroll. And I don't know if you can see them in amongst the rushes, but the little birds are flittering around in there. It's just a nice little spot, just um, out of the way of the traffic too. This morning I thought I'd ask this question. What do you do when you don't know? And a lot of us spend a lot of our life... Um, contemplating I think questions the, the greater points of life um, and just those tough wrestling with those tough and difficult questions too you know what what about this what about that um, but what do you do when you don't know where do you turn to what who do you turn to for, for much of the world um, you know <laughs> you're doing an assignment or so forth um, we turn to things like Wikipedia or uh, textbooks or or other forms of human knowledge uh, that are compiled over uh, a long period of time. And <clears throat> that's, that's good. I mean, God has given us all wisdom um, and he's given us, uh, you know, brains and, and intellect to, to pursue the bigger things in life. But they're always meant to be pursued. All the big questions were meant to be pursued through the lens of God and his wisdom. You know, the, the scriptures continually tell us to turn to God. Isaiah one eighteen says, the Lord says, come let us reason together. God wants to have sometimes those difficult conversations with us and those difficult questions we have to ask. He, he wants us to come to him. This morning, I wanted to take a look at Daniel chapter 2. Now, Daniel chapter 2, um, you know, is, is the bread and butter of Adventist preaching and Adventist uh, eschatology all the things we, we know about and pursue uh, and try to understand about the end, time, end times. And we often race right to the really guts of it, what we see, the, the core of it, you know, the, the image, the, the statue part. Um, we want to know about the, the kingdoms and we want to know about the interpretation. But there's a lot that happens before that because, as you know, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream about this, this image and it confounds him. He's, he's stunned by it. He, he knows it's something profound, but he doesn't know what it means. And so he turns to his wise men and they consult Wikipedia of their day, each other. None of them can come up with an idea. So they tell the king that, you know, he has to tell them what the dream is. And he goes, no, no, I know you're, you're scamming me here. I want you to tell me the dream and then tell me the interpretation. They go, there's nobody on earth that can possibly do that. No one. So he sends out Arioch to start culling the wise men from the community. It's a fair bit of an overreaction by a dictator. Kind of sounds familiar. Till Daniel pops into the scene. And Daniel knows that he doesn't have the answer. So he says to Arrow, can you hold on for a tick? And then I want to pick it up here in, in verse 17. Then Daniel went home, told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask God of heaven to show him, them in his mercy by telling them the secret so that they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. What do you do when you wrestle with a big question? Well, you need a bunch of like-minded friends, apparently. And you hail a prayer vigil. You get together and you pray together. You pray for each other. You pray for the answer. You pray for God to reveal it. You pray and you hope. See, in that section of passage is an acknowledgement of who God is and who we aren't. It's acknowledgement of who, who has all wisdom and all, all answers. And it also is a desperation of going before God and praying. But also, it's of hope. You know, they know that they, if they don't come up with an answer, they're going to die. So they put all of their hope, all of their trust, all of their faith in God. And they have a whole, an all-night prayer vigil, seeking for the answers. And God doesn't fail them, doesn't let them down. And so Daniel later is able to come before the king and tell the king, the king says, Daniel, do you have an answer? And Daniel says, no, there are no wise men, enchanters, fortune tellers, magicians, or anyone 
who can reveal the secret of God. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has shown you, King, what will happen in the future. Isn't it amazing when we, when we place our trust in God? We might not get the answer in a night like Daniel did, but eventually we will get an answer. And it might not be an answer we like. I mean, I can't imagine Daniel was too thrilled that he was going to have to go before the king and say, mate, it's all good to this point, um, but it's not going to last forever, my friend. You're not, you're not around here forever. You are the king of kings right now, of earthly kings, but it's not going to last I can imagine there was a bit of a lump in his throat as he delivered that message. But with the full confidence that God had given him in interpreting the dream, he was able to go ahead and bring his message to the king. And the king was pleased with it. Sometimes the answers that we get aren't always that pleasing. But God didn't say they had to be. He said, you ask the question, you wrestle with it, you ask and you come before me. I'll give you an answer. But it's my answer not your answer so in Daniel chapter 2 the prayer and the prayer vigil and the seeking of God's wisdom are the most important thing not the statue not the dream but the obedience and the trust and the hope and the faith that God will answer and God knows best that's the important part of Daniel chapter 2 let's pray together father I want to thank you this morning that you have all knowledge that you have all wisdom and for reasons only you know lord you pass that on to us and you ask us to do it together and to share that knowledge and to to come before you and seek your wisdom and, and be filled with your holy spirit and i pray that that's what we seek today that we seek after your face we, that we are seeking your wisdom and lord if we're not if we're using our own wisdom i pray that you help correct us that we allow you to stop us in our tracks and to correct to correct correct us and to to get us back in harmony with you lord Lord, I pray a blessing upon this day for those who are listening and who will listen later. And may they have a blessed day and may they bless others in it. And Lord, and we just want your return soon, but we know that there are many others who need to hear you, hear about you and what you're doing for them. So we ask for the opportunities that will come in today that we may spread your good news to somebody else. So Lord, keep us in your care, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, have a good day. See a few little bottle brushes starting to flower and poke out of the scrub there. Um, like I said, there's great little spots all over Brisbane. You just got to go and sometimes get out and have a look for them, and they'll pop up. Also, seek after the Lord. Till we meet each other again, take care and God bless. And I'll see you soon.